Greetings and salutations, this is Emperor Art of Vespasian and his trusty sidekick. Hello! Today we're having a look at our completed version of the West Wall. Yes? yes. Uh, this is the West Wall of the Alamo, um, another part of our Alamo project. Previously we showed you the half-built version, which wasn't built, uh, well we'd built it, haven't we? But we haven't painted it up. Uh, this is actually the painted up version of the wall. Um, this basically consists of the barracks, which is, that's the barracks there, uh, and some basic sort of quarters on the other side. Now, as you scan over, um, this is the set of stairs that leads up outside, which I've only just put on. I didn't put it on the other version. Um, that's the interior, which looks quite cool. And that's the rear. So it's nicely painted. Yeah, it's nicely painted and, and done up. It looks quite good. And, and I have Texans. Yeah, I've got two Texans inside. There's one Texan just there, defending the wall, and there's a Texan at the back. So this is the final completed version of the West Wall. We'll just spin it around and show you what we've got. This part comes off. We'll go with the smaller part first, shall we? Yeah. So this is the small part. It's going to be quite defendable. You've got a nice wooden palisade wall which they've added. Uh, this was originally for the cattle. Yeah, I'm talking about. Um, and they've fenced off the wall, finished off the fencing and fortified it nicely inside so it's going to be an extra layer of defense for the defenders of the Alamo and the Mexicans will be coming from this side so they'll have to get over the palisade and there'll be a cannon mounted here anyway so it's going to be quite hard to get in and do damage but so. there's also yeah yeah there's quite a lot of them. so then that, that's a problem um, so it is defendable um, this room here is where Bowie died have you got boy? Yeah, I have. I've got boy. That's boy. He goes in there. Um, just there. That's where he he came to a sticky end. Um, then we'll skip over to the actual main part. This is the bag house. Um, another one of the more recognisable parts of the Alamo. Um, I think the main gate's quite recognisable. Um, and the big, uh, the chapel. Is recognizable, uh, yeah, yeah, of course it is. Um, the chapels of the names from, yeah. Um, however, the the, 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 re the rest of it was really just normal walls and stuff, so you're not gonna be able to pick it out of a crowd. Um, inside here, we have quite a defendable area. We have the area in, inside here, which is the main barracks, uh, and there's a slight top floor which has been broken, which you can stand troops in, and then there's a little bit of the roof still standing. Not much, because bear in mind this this Alamo is set at the very the final bit of the battle, and it's been shelled for the last what twelve days? Yeah, a week or so. Yeah, so it's had some. Do you think after a week or so you get more support than three hundred men? <laughs> yeah, it had also been um, pretty much wrecked by sheer neglect because uh, the whole place is falling apart anyway. And well, yeah, it all. Yeah, and, well, it's hundred years old by the time the Alamo battle happened. So you're attacking an <laughs> ancient building anyway, and this is America, remember? So everything's relative. Um, if in England we we were defending the same fortress for for a thousand years, just adding the old wall here and there, the old there's still there. Yeah, they're still there today. There's a thousand year wall still around. Yeah, we've still got castles that are a thousand years old. Um, right, we've been around. Yeah, we've been here a while. Yeah, we've been knocking around a while. Um, so, actually, there's still parts of Roman walls left. This uh, in in uh, York. No, there's Roman, there's Roman Colosseum in Rome. That's still standing. Well, obviously, yeah. Um, that's because it's so big. No one could actually. Take <laughs> it. Well, they had a good go though. Um, so, spin it around here. Um, that is actually part of the wall that will connect to the. Uh, to the chapel, uh, but you've got some nice rooms you can fire out of. 
and this is the back wall. So this is the aspect that the Mexicans are going to have attacking. There's a position there for the gun, that's where the gun's going to go. Um, so you can get quite a bit of cannon fire out of that area. Plus you can actually man this low, well, relatively low wall. So did it kind of ruin the wall, making it easier for the Mexicans to get over? No, it was like that already from all shelling. Oh, yeah. Um, quite a lot of shelling had gone on. Um, I say shelling, they didn't use, use shells, they used uh, cannonballs. Uh, the Mexicans had a six, uh, sorry, the Texans had a 16 pounder, which was built to fire uh, um, stone cannonballs. What about? Um, they didn't use it. Oh, wow. Why not? They didn't have any stone cannonballs. <laughs> Is it easy to make a stone cannonball? No, it's not. It's really hard to make a stone cannonball. Well, you need get, a stone get, mason. Get a lot of stones. Uh, no, uh, no, no, no. You uh, need uh, a stone pay, mason. Pay a sto stone mason to double, double his wage. Yeah, you try and find one in Mexico during the war. They're all going to have jobs doing other things. Migrate, <laughs> migrate to America and find one. Yeah. Um, so, uh, I don't think they actually use that cannon. Um, I there were a few cannons that they didn't use. They did have a lot of cannon, and some of them were just not really usable. Uh, the 18 pounder they only used as fire, uh, to fire grape because they didn't have any cannonballs for it. Mm -hmm. um, that was actually dragged 200 miles. And they, they got to the Alamo just after the Alamo being captured by the Texans. It was originally brought to the Alamo to fire at the Alamo, but the Texans captured the Alamo. And they realized that they didn't have any cannonballs for it because they'd forgot to bring cannonballs. So they left it and wandered off. And the Alamo defenders ended up using it. Wow. Yeah. Uh, that was from Alabama, the 18-pounder. Sweet home Alabama. Uh, yeah, OK. Um, anyway, so this bit's going to be quite defendable. You've got two layers of defense. You've got this layer here, which you're going to be able to try and fend the enemy off. And you can always fall back to the barrack house. So again, another layer of defence. And technically, you could shoot over the heads of the defenders. Actually, they probably can't. But no, they can't. But it's it's relatively defendable. Um, then we will put this on here. That's how it goes. So you see the overall building taking shape now. That's one of the defenders with a pistol, and there's the defender with a rifle. So you've got a defender with a rifle there, and a defender with a pistol. Um, yeah, so that's how the Alamo's gone so far. And we'll fit the... Alamo on. Um, the Alamo, well, the, yeah, the Alamo on. <laughs> which is this, which will go like that. So that is the... You love how to attack this, you? The Alamo from the west wall. This is the west aspect of the Alamo. A uh, little bit of the west wall to finish off on that side, but generally done. There's only one half, isn't it? Um, yeah, it's one wall, basically. There's quite a bit more to do, but I think we're slowly getting there. Slowly. Yeah, I think my Texan army will crash our Mexican army. Well, we'll find out, shall we? I'm not I, mean, really sure. I, mean, I mean, my Texan garrison will wipe out your Mexican army. Your Texan garrison? Garrison plus 30 men. And Crockett. And well, Jim Boyd only really counts, he didn't really make it. He was too ill. Well, he did. He was there for the first part of the siege. He did fight for the first part of the siege. He, wasn't he wants to leave. Man of the walls. Well, yeah, his, his job was actually to leave. His, his job was to screw up, was screw up the plan and then run off. Was to blow the cannon up and um, get out of there. Just sort of leave. I mean, um, a pocket. Who well, also didn't want to be there? Well, the idea was was to blow up the Alamo so it couldn't be used by the Tex by the Mexicans. But um, was it Travis who wanted to hold it? Yeah. Yeah. It changed, changed Bob's mind. Well, it was a defendable position, and given the situation they were in, and the, uh, the, the, the time we're talking about, um, it really was one of the most defendable positions that the Texans, the Texans had. had. Yeah, 
And bear in mind, the text now was massacred at Goliad. And some of the survivors from Goliad made it to the Alamo, and the others retreated towards Fanon. Um, it was a fortified position. Yeah, but hey, even though they lost, um, they mainly destroyed most of, um, well, not, not, not a lot of it, but quite a lot of the Mexican army. Well, if you take into account wounded, they probably gave about a third casualties to the Texans, to the Mexicans. Uh, there were about 300 defenders of the Alamo. Some we, knew, we, knew, we knew that 30 horsemen went in uh, to support. Yeah, and between 30 and 50 tried to break out during the battle. Um, they didn't make it. But, uh, but so, yeah, I'd, I'd say there was a good 200 defenders throughout the battle. Um, between two and three hundred, we don't know. This is the problem, we don't actually know, we can only guess. Also, Travis expected uh, the guy to come from his army. Um, yeah, well, the, the load of defenders, a load of troops did actually set out to try and, def tr tr try and help, but they set off with four cannon and one of the wheels fell off the cannon. So they decided to go back for some reason, rather than abandon the cannon. Um, they decided to go back instead and not bother going. So. Um, and as for Sam Houston, he'd actually wandered off to negotiate with the Cherokee. So he wasn't even there. He wasn't anything to do. He was technically commander of the army, but everyone had ignored him throughout the, the campaign. So he was the commander of the army, he was issuing orders, and people just ignored him. And did their own thing. So he wandered off to negotiate with the Cherokee, which was kind of a good idea because it meant the Texans wouldn't be fighting a two front war. Because the Te Cherokee could have come in on the side of Santa Ana. No, no, no. And yeah, and there's no way the Texans could have made that. Although the Texans alone beat Santa Ana, so. Who could have predicted that? No one did. Yeah, no. who could have predicted. Well, even the defenders of the Alamo knew they were going to make it. <laughs> yeah, who could have predicted a tiny, tiny Texan army could defeat a larger. Uh, it's Napoleon style type battle, didn't it? Napoleon didn't like being on, uh, on flat ground. And Santa Ana liked, liked to call himself Napoleon. Um, yeah, um, Santa Ana made the mistake of sending the cavalry off with the uh, the other half of his army. And another, he, he split them off three, three ways. Yeah, he split half, half of his army and told them to try and get around the back of Sam Houston's troops, the Texan troops. So they couldn't escape. He was trying to stop the Texans running away. Because every time he was about to fight the Texans, the Texans ran away. But they were running away this time. No, this time they were fighting. fighting a proper but he'd already split his army up to try and head them off. Meaning, when Santa Ana was fighting, then two halves of the army were halfway down the map. Yeah. So, just like well, uh, Napoleon at Waterloo, half the French army had buggered off. Yeah, because so they, uh, they, they heard gunfire. Yeah, they had gunfire, they didn't match the sound of the guns, whereas the Germans did. Blue can match to the sound of the guns, whereas, um, what's the other chap's name? What's the chap in, ch in charge of the French army? Oh yeah, the this chap called, it's, it's called Napoleon? No, the chap who um, Napoleon sent off with a third of his men. When he sent them off, did it? They just went on their own free will. No, he sent them to chase the um, Prussians. What about his name? Grushi. Grushi. Yeah, he sent Grushi off to fight the Prussians, uh, to follow the Prussians, to make sure the Prussians didn't link up with the rest of the rest of the uh, didn't link up with the British. So I bet that when when they when um, Prussian troops went came from out of Paris, I bet the point went. Oh, it destroyed the third man. Uh, no, well, I don't know. Ba basically, um, the, the Prussians were supposed to um, make it to the British, and so Grouchy followed them to try and stop them from, 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 from helping the British. But Blücher and um, his other commander fell out. And Not so, normal. yeah, one of his commanders, the, the other guy in charge of the army, decided to march back to Berlin. 
he thought the war was over. He thought the Germans had lost, and he was marching back to Berlin to, 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 to organize the defense of the city, expecting a French invasion of Germany at any moment. Uh, whereas Blücher marched off with the other half of the army. And when Grouchy came to follow him, they followed the other half. They followed the German, the, the, the half heading back to Germany. So he followed the wrong army, basically. Wow. Um, anyway, that's just history. Uh, yeah, so this is the Alamo so far. This is what we've got done. I think it's beginning to look better. I think it is too. It looks better now, it's painted anyway. Yeah. So that's most of the west wall done, a um, little bit more to do, and then the north wall. Yep. Which was the weakest wall of the Alamo. Which I'm going to do, I've got a plan for that when I play again. What's that? I'm telling you, because it's my plan. Put your best troops on it. No, it's the worst plan. Oh, okay. <laughs> Put your worst troops on it, yeah. Um, I just put your best troops in the wall that's bound to fall. Well, that's basically what they did. Um, they put the New Orleans... Uh, yeah, they put Travis there. New Orleans. And Travis got shot in the head. Well, it was New Orleans and Alabama, it was Alabama troops they put on there. Yeah, Travis got shot in the head right there as well. Yeah, Travis got, uh, that's where Travis died. He was with the regular army soldiers. Crockett was with him as well, eh? No, Crockett was at the other side of it. Uh, he was manning the... South Wall. Which is where the main gate was. Which was technically the next weakest point of the Alamo. So you put your two best commanders in the two best areas where you need them. But it's up to you. It's going to be your Alamo to defend. I'm going to win. Yeah, okay. I am. Good. I'm going to thrash you. <laughs> we'll find out. Well, we know how I do like rolling dice and trying to destroy walls at the same time. So I think we're going to win. Okay. You might. So Six let us know what you think of the model so far and our name talking about stuff. I hope you like what we've done so far and look forward to what we're doing next. Uh, as I said, next is going to be the North Wall. Um, outro? So, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe and comment down below what you think of this magnificent, magnificent wall. So, thank you very much for watching. Goodbye. Okay, from me. And everything from him. Goodbye.